Lakehouse Federation allows you to query data from external sources without needing to ingest it into the Lakehouse. You can easily break down silos like the ones seen on the screen and you can make them accessible on the data intelligence platform as a catalog. Currently, there are nine data sources available. That sources are Synapse, Redshift, Snowflake, Google BigQuery, Salesforce Data Cloud, MySQL, PostgreSQL, Microsoft SQL. Also, you can federate another Unity catalog. Uh, soon, also Teradata and Oracle will join the club. With Lakehouse Federation, you gain unified view of all your data inside the Unity catalog. Unity catalog acts fact, as, fact as, as an enterprise data catalog where you can manage permission, uh, view lineage. Uh, from Unity catalog, you send real-time queries to analyze uh, data or queries for machine learning purposes and you don't need to move data to make these analytic queries. Uh, Lakehouse Federation uses the power of distributing computing of Spark. It leverages SQL Warehouse. SQL Warehouse optimizes queries which are pushed down to external data sources. So for example, if you use a filter, only the data which is needed will be imported from that database. So we can see here an example with filter where, for example, ID is equal to one, and that filter is pushed down to external data sources. Uh, the same is about aggregation. Aggregation are also pushed uh, down to external data sources. Additionally, you can delta share that data from Lakehouse Federation with outside world without ingesting this into the Lakehouse. And this is a really interesting use case. Okay, let's see in practice how Lakehouse Federation works. Uh, let's look to scenario where both Azure SQL database and Databricks are hosted in the same tenant. Uh, I will show you how to analyze the data directly from Azure SQL using Databricks without ingesting that data into a data lake. We have Azure SQL database, that one, con and it's containing sales schema and product table. Let's make it available in uh, Databricks. Uh, first, what we need to do in Databricks is create connection. To create connection, you need to have uh, permissions uh, which in Unity Catalog, which is called Create Connection. And to do that, we click, uh, we, it can be done programmatically or through UI. Let's click here, Add Connection. From Connection Type, let's select uh, SQL Server. It's supporting also Azure SQL. So let's name Connection Azure uh, SQL. Uh, we we are using simple setup, username and password, but probably for production purposes, you will use uh, OAuth authentication with service principal and set private link connection. But we, we, for now, we are just using username and password. So we need to copy paste our host name. Okay, username is correct. I will copy the password. And let's test connection. It is using SQL Warehouse for connection purposes. Okay, connection established, perfect. Let's create it. We see here details about uh, our connection. Uh, inside our connection, there is uh, option to create catalog. So let's click it. We have to name it catalog. Uh, it, it is a name which will be used inside Databricks. And we need to choose which database from Azure SQL will be mapped to our uh, catalog name in Databricks. In that case, the database name is SQL Hubert. Okay, let's copy that. So that SQL Hubert will be mapped to Azure SQL name and schemas inside SQL Hubert will become uh, databases inside our catalog. Okay, let's create it. We can configure catalog. 
So we said that all workspace ha have access to it. We can grant additional permission. The basic permission browse allow users to see what tables are there without uh, seeing actual data. And save it. And that's all. And we have Azure SQL catalog here. Okay, and here is our Azure SQL catalog. So this is our database map to catalog. In that catalog, all users have browse uh, permissions. We can grant also users use catalog permission. And for catalog, which we are going to use sales, we will grant users use schema permissions. And for our product table, we will grant users select permissions. Uh, that catalog is read only. That's why uh, number of permissions is so limited. All catalogs under Lake House Federation are read only. Okay, so we have product table. We can see some sample data. Yes, it is here, but let's see the same using SQL editor. So we will create query with that table. Okay, so let's build the query and check the push down filtering. Uh, so let's set that where product ID is equal to 710 and let's put limit one. And let's execute that query. Okay, so we have our record. Let's see uh, the time, uh, how much, how long it took to execute that. And when we click that, we can see query profile. And here, when we click the scanning of uh, Lakehouse Federated uh, table, we can see exactly what query was sent to. Uh, to Azure SQL. So we can see that there was limit one was applied and that also our filter was applied. So only data uh, which is which is needed was imported. But OK, let's see something more advanced and let's join that uh, that table with table which is already already ingested into the lake house. So that uh, table is called product category and it should be joined on product category ID field. Okay, it worked and to our product table from Azure SQL category name was added. We can rename it to as category name. Uh, we can see the query profile profile. So we can see that the data which was uh, read from Azure SQL was joined, joined with data from uh, from Delta files so from our Unity catalog table. And if we are going to use that query frequently, the good idea can be register that query as as materi materialized view. So to do that, let's let's prettify it a bit and add here also a schema sk catalog and schema name. And what we need to do here, we will create materialized view. And we can name it, for example, external products. There are more options available for materialized view. For example, you can set scheduling uh, for, for them, how often they are refreshed. But let's create the most simple one, uh, which is only refreshed manually.
Once our materialized view was created, we can find it in catalog. So we need to go to to schema to which we save it. We can see it here. Uh, when we click, we can see when last time it was refreshed. When we click it, we will open Delta Life Table. So it is Delta Life Table, which is performing refreshing of that materialized view. What is interesting here, it's Lineage tab, because if we click see Lineage Graph, we can see that our external data source, so SQL Server, is included in that lineage. So it's really nice uh, solution to uh, to govern your data and uh, to check what is data uh, data flow. Additionally, we can create uh, delta share uh, with with that materialized view. It is possible also to share data from Lake House Federation without creating materialized view, but this feature is in private preview. So to try it to share it directly, you need to contact your Databricks representative to enable it for your workspace. Uh, one thing which we need to remember uh, is that dep depends on data source for Lake House Federation. There are different different data type mapping. We, you can check it in the documentation every time. So every data type from the source is mapped to different data type on uh, on Databricks size. And also, there are always uh, there are always some information related to supported pushdowns. So depends on data sources, there are more or less supported pushdowns. Uh, I think that Lakehouse Federation is uh, a powerful tool to unlock numerous use cases. And I highly recommend you to explore its potential. Uh, thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Uh, see you in the next video.